two, three. CCAST, the critical care air support team based at Bryce Norton, exists to repatriate critically ill patients back to the United Kingdom. Do you know when the injury took place? It may be military personnel, their wives, their children, or even diplomats or government contractors. And it all begins with a call. Good morning, CCAST. When the CCAST phone rings, it's because someone somewhere in the world needs help. Yeah, yeah, do you want me to come over? Although this is an exercise, it's yeah, just what would happen for right, real. Right. Thank you. Basically, there's a patient move now. Um, so there's, they've got some information for us, so we'll get some uh, basic details about the patient, where they are, um, what, what state they're in. Um, and then we can sit down and go through the information and hopefully pick out some points that we might want to query a bit further. Morning. Within the next six hours, CCAS must establish what's happened, pack an entire intensive care unit into around 10 pelly cases and a couple of rucksacks and build a hospital in the sky. Thank you. Is there any aircraft available at the moment? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Okay. Each so month, a new CCAS team are put on call, and this exercise happens in their first few days. I have the information. They're not so much training as revising CCAS procedure and learning to work together. These are highly experienced consultants, nurses and registrars. Once a year, they leave their NHS hospitals scattered across the country and come here to Bryce Norton, ready to take a call at any time of the day or night. So we've got a 31-year-old male who's um, admitted to Nicosia General Hospital with polytrauma. In today's scenario, a young serviceman has been crushed by a jackal whilst on exercise in Cyprus. The patient was hit by the vehicle and crushed against the wall. There's no timing of the incident, so I've got that as a request for information. And also whether we should take blood. Pro probably should be on the safe side. Uh, so that's AECC with flight times. So uh, flying out tonight uh, and then uh, wheels up from Akrotiri is tomorrow at 10.40 Zulu on an A400. Now it's time to pack. They can build their intensive care unit on a range of different aircraft. The urgency of the situation and which aircraft are available determines what they fly in and they'll adapt their kit to suit. Today it's an A400M. As long as it fits. I think that's it's like the worst game of Tetris. <laughs> There's so much kit. Obviously we're limited on space. Once we're in the air, we cannot go to the store cupboard and get some more equipment or different equipment. It's just making sure you get it all in, you get it in safely. We've got what we've got, so if it doesn't work at the other end, that could be the end of the mission same before you've even started. There you go, well done. Does it close? Of course it does. Yes. With the hospital all just... packed, it's loaded onto the aircraft. Oh, the case is laid out in a line and strapped down for the flight. It's thinking about the priority of what you might need in flight and also being able to open the boxes while you're flying. So the idea is not to have to unstrap everything so that it becomes a hazard. You hope for a, a non-eventful flight, but you've got to plan for the worst. So airway things, things that you're going to need in a hurry, drugs we know we're going to need. It becomes a lot trickier when there's cargo on here and it's test and adjust each time. In this hypothetical scenario, the team have now reached Nicosia and their patient in need of assistance. Tim Peake is a mannequin, but a mannequin of many talents. So this is our Simman 3G. We can wake him up, he can make noises, he can make breath sounds, he can make bowel sounds. I can make him cough. <coughs> or you can have a vomiting noise. <coughs> Doc, I feel like I could die. There's all sorts in here, actually. That helped. <laughs> These are all pre-recorded, but there is the option to record your own should you, uh, should you want to. <laughs> Sadly, Tim is unconscious when the team arrive, and so will remain rather silent. Tim, hello, sir. My name's Ron, one of the doctors. I'm just going to have a quick look at you, all right? Shall I do pumps? Once you're at this stage, often it's a time limitation, so you know that the aircraft needs to leave uh, reasonably, reasonably soon. Uh, and so actually you have to work quite quickly as a team to get the patient ready uh, and back to the aircraft so that you can get airborne, because um, obviously the aircrew are waiting for you and, and the clock is rather ticking. So it's called a kind of a team effort to, to get the patient ready and to get going in a safe, safe, safe manner. Ready, steady, slide. It's a big responsibility. Um, it does involve potentially yep. moving critically ill patients potentially thousands of miles. 
being in an aircraft brings its challenges. Less air pressure, which can have an effect. The remoteness of the location at high altitude, potentially even a war zone. Oh, sorry there, Tim. Bump. Bump. In the time of Iraq and Afghanistan, the team were often called upon 10 times or more each month. It's quieter now, but of course that could change at any time. Ready to shock, all clear, shocking now. Shock delivered. It is vital and it has been vital and was proven during the, the Herrick and Afghan days. It's a hearts and minds thing as well, kind of knowing that someone that ill can get home and be with their family for support. So. At the end of the day, it, there are patients who have potentially put their life on the line for Queen and Country. And you know, your mission is to you know, give them the best, best chance of recovery. Um, and you just do, a, do play a small part there, but it's a very important part. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.